You see, ever since I met Steve, we've been having an affair. <laughs> I don't even think my husband Larry or Nate fully realized the depth of our affair, but in every sense of the word, it was an affair of the heart. I know that neither Larry nor Nate felt threatened by the closeness that Steve and I share, and you know why? Many people might think it's because Steve was gay and I am not, but you know, who cares about that? Certainly nobody in this room. Um, but that had absolutely nothing to do with why Larry or Nate weren't threatened. Larry loved Steve as much as I did, and I know Nate loves us as much as we love him. The reasons that our spouses were not threatened, and the reason that no one in this room cares who is straight or gay, is simply because love trumps everything. Love trumps bigotry, love trumps prejudice, love trumps hatred. It trumps ignorance, and today, love trumps sorrow. No one understood and lived this universal truth, truth about the power of love more than Steve. Think back to the conversations that you had with him, and the emails and the voicemails that you received from him. And I'll sh I'm sure you'll agree that the most consistent and heartfelt message he always expressed was love. I know that I'm not the only one who has received countless expressions of Steve's love, but I'd like to share just a few examples of Stephen, of the spirit of Stephen. In an email message he sent to me six months ago, Steve said, focus on the love, that's all that matters here or anywhere. And from a couple of years ago, he said, I love you so much. You may not realize it, but you are with me every day. Some of the most precious moments I have had in my life have been with you. I'm so happy we found each other in this life. And from another email around the same time, he said, I love you. I have been thinking about you a lot lately. I know I send you these emails all the time, but I just wanted you to know that I love you. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't use some of the valuable lessons you taught me. Attitude is everything. If you think you're going to be a big, fat, miserable piece of shit, you are. <laughs> if you think you are going to be happy and a respectable person, you will be. Sometimes I laugh at what the universe shows me. It's like the universe is just trying to play jokes with me. Ha 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 ha. It always brings me back to you. Thanks so much for showing up in my life. I get sad when I think of where I would have gone without you. Love wasn't just a word or an emotion for Steve. It was his mission. He lived it every day, and now he has commissioned us to carry on his legacy of love. Even though he is gone from our sight, Stephen Michael Moore lives on in all of us. In every kindness we extend and every gesture of love we convey, the spirit of Stephen lives on. Oh, sure, he had little patience for slow drivers and mean people. In fact, he had some very colorful adjectives about them. But when it came down to it, Steve loved everyone unconditionally, especially his family and friends. Yet the pain of losing him is almost unbearable, isn't it? How tremendously sad and unfair it is to have lost someone so loving, so vibrant, and so endearing. For me, the intensity of pain I am feeling is even more pronounced because it was 20 years ago that Larry and I lost our only child, our son Chad, and when he, when he was studying abroad. When Chad left, he took so much of me with him that I thought my heart would never sing again. It was Stephen who struck up the band in me once more. We share a soul connection, and we always will. In my pain and grief, I find myself wanting to shut down and insulate my heart all over again. But I know better. I can hear Steve telling me, Pearson, you better not. Girl, you got shit to do. <laughs> and so I do, Stephen, so I do. I often wonder why we were created with a heart that can be broken so easily. I'm then reminded that although it can be broken, it can also heal with a vast amount of love poured into it. To close our hearts down is to miss the magic and the blessings of love. Keeping our hearts open exposes to yet more pain 
but thanks in a large part to having Steve in my life, I have it no other way. It's the human experience that brings us closer to the spiritual self, and now closer to Steve as well. So our love affair will continue soul to soul. Oh, I almost forgot. My other confession, we were both in different kinds of closets, so to speak. Earlier in Steve's life, it wasn't really safe for him to be open about being gay. And it wasn't safe for me to be open about being an intuitive, a medium, if you will. Steve and I shared an interest in spiritual and metaphysical topics. He was intrigued beyond measure with my gift, and we would spend untold hours discussing all things spiritual, often at the expense of, and in contrast to the hypocrisy of religion that he had all too often experienced firsthand, he often asked me, girl, why are you coming out of that psychic closet? <laughs> well, Steve, here I am. So when I say I can hear Steve, it's actually true. After receiving the horrific news of his plane crash, I immediately wanted to do something that Steve and I loved to do together, and that was meditate. I went out in my backyard, sat in the grass, and started to meditate, and I asked Steve for a sign. Although there are no trees in my backyard, this sassafras leaf spiraled down from the sky and landed directly in my lap. Now, this carried a powerful message for me because Steve and Larry had a running joke about leaves being forbidden to fall in our yard. Larry would tell Steve that these son of a bitches don't belong in our yard. <laughs> so, of course, Steve would send us pictures of a solitary leaf lying in the grass and reassure Larry that he took care of that as me. <laughs>
Then back to earth at the end of the day, released from the tensions which melted away. Should my end come while I am in flight, whether brightest day or darkest night, spare me your pity and shrug off the pain, secure in the knowledge that I do it again. For each of us is created to die, and within me I know I was born to fly. Godspeed, my friend, we will carry on your mission of love.